This is the Doc Psychology Podcast with Lynn Bokey, Todd Langston, and Art Ortiz. Welcome to the Doc Psychology Podcast with Lynn, Todd, and Art. I'm actually the sweetness, and you guys are the two crusty cookies. That was a uh, feedback we got, an email from uh, oh, no. someone that said, I saw Lynn that. and Todd are crusty cookies, and I'm the sweetness. So I appreciate that, guys, whoever said that. Um, anyways, today we're going to be talking about memories, dogs, how they perceive memories, how they, um, you know, they don't have a memory like human beings do. So, Todd, you're the one that had brought this 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 topic up today. Why don't you go and start us off with, with memories? Uh, it's pretty... Uh pretty blunt start but yeah it was i'm know, just trying to punt yeah. off on you that's all the sweetness Punchy. that was awfully... <laughs> yeah totally i'm the fucking crusty cookie dude why yeah, don't you start, yeah, start with the crusty guy? cookie first <laughs> I think he was having, he's having difficulty with his technology so it rubbed off and in, into the cast <laughs> uh well i think one of the things that um a couple of things like i did a post today on the way dogs communicate and there's some simple things that humans do that it's very difficult for dogs. One, you know, to, like I mentioned today, communicating sound oriented. But the other one is believing dogs hold memories in a storage unit like we do, right? Humans have this ability to retrieve memories. Um, I, I believe it's episodic memory. So you can, if right now, if I said red Corvette, right, we're all going to think of a red Corvette in our own little what way year and yeah right so it's like uh, that's what i'm saying are you in it are you seeing it so if i say red corvette right now your memory is is retrieving something and it's even hard to say where and when it's retrieving it from it could be from when you were 10. i know exactly where mine is <laughs> so there you go so that's 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 uniquely human and memory even in humans is super difficult it's it's in in its study it's extremely difficult to understand memory there's certain things they know dopamine highly affected are highly tied to memory. So as you have an intense situation emotionally, your memory increases. That's why you tend to mem like have memories of big important events and you memorize, or excuse me, have memories of little things in those important events, right? That's, that's dopamine, so they say. Now dogs, it's associative. Now we also have that, and associative is the more simple form of memory where just two things are equated. Which it means if you were to say red Corvette to a dog, they have to be in front of a red Corvette. The red Corvette has to be present, right? Well, so that's still not what red is and Corvette. Well, but you know what I'm saying. So, but it has to whatever it has to be in front of them. Associative memory has to be triggered by something. In dog case, it'd be nose, eyes, ears. So, people think a dog holds a memory, and the best way I and I did you know it was interesting. I did a post on this, and it went big, but I got a lot of shit on it. And the point of the post was. A dog's memory is not going to be like present until they smell you. That their their overall memory is held like their full memory is held in their nose. And timid dogs, because you know you get all these uh, reunion videos and all these reunion where the dogs are like, "What the fuck? Who are you?" You know, and it takes a couple minutes. And the point of this video is because that's what I'd used was with these timid dogs. They're not going to use their ears and have a memory. They're not going to use their eyes and have a memory. They're going to have to use their nose, the file of memory. And that's the associative memory. And people were giving me shit. No, my dog knows. And, and I get that. And the, you know, the calmer the dog, the more they can do it. But just not too long ago, my own dogs barked at me when I came home from vacation. So that was the whole thing is that everybody thinks dogs remember uh, why somebody gets up and goes to the bathroom and then the dogs bark at him again. So yes, Art, thank you for punting to me. You're um, welcome. But yeah, that's what I'm saying is I think understanding the way a dog remembers will help you understand how to teach a dog something. Or, you know, Lynn, you were really emphatic about this with me is in those, you know, the way that they're going to, they're not going to remember. And, you know, our, here we go. This is the big one for everybody. Your dog gets in the trash can and you come home and you start yelling at your dog and they look like they're sorry, you know, and they're like, oh, fuck. And it, you know, and it looks like they know that they did something wrong or pooped on the floor. And even I get caught up in that. I'm not immune to that. I look at that. I'm like, motherfucker, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, you did something wrong. I mean, fuck, you know, but not only because to, it, I it, they know. when we fall into that, us, when we fall into it, it's the only thing that they know is that we know. Exactly. So they're mirroring or reflecting reacting to what it is that you're currently doing so if well, you're mad and that's the thing with like when people the whole house training thing 
You know, people get it. They believe that the dog knows that they did something wrong. Or they're trying to, they're being, the, he just peed on me because I was gone all day. They're being oh, yeah, mad at me. Fightful. Oh, there you go. Yep. Sometimes they do do things. It's not out of spite or they're mad at you. It's just a uh, strength or weakness, top, bottom, front, back, leader, follower. And you did something that they didn't see as uh, in line with that. And then they had to mark it. That they then now it's like the baseball bat. Who's going to be the captain, right? Whoever lands on top is the one. And if they pee on your pillow, <laughs> they're the one. How about peeing well, on I shoes? Like what you said, Todd, about how you talk about like by the nose. You know, I, I've been working with these dogs, these Bernese Mountain dogs. Um, I just got done with them on Monday, and uh, the one of the older dogs, he would every time I would walk in the house, he would always bark, rawr, 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 rawr. and then he would be like, oh, it's just you, and then he would stop. So he would go through the, and when I first met him, uh, he would bark nonstop, like nonstop. But then he started to slowly remember, oh, it's that guy again. Oh, it's that guy. Now he's having a different association with the guests in the house. But he would always, every time I'd walk, he would go, rawr, 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 and, he would go and then he would get a whiff. He's like, oh, okay, it's just you. It's no different than you post those videos of, of the reunions, the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So if you don't mind, I'll, I'll go into what my pattern is. So everyone can see it's. It's there. It's die. You can find it anywhere in any video, and I can point it out to you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna set the timer. Move. Set the timer. Off yeah. family's coming in, so I'm going to uh, migrate. Keep talking. Okay, so, so, so it, it, you're gonna hear some of what what Todd said, but just in in my way of saying it, I guess. So dogs don't have a memory; they only associate. That does look like a memory to us. Humans have memory and associations. Associations can, for humans especially, become a, a physical memory. Like you, if you associate or remember something traumatic or exciting or loving, you're now reliving that moment in time, but just attached it or projected it on this current moment that you're in. So it's similar with dogs. With humans, I can ask you, what's two plus two? And you'll say four. What color is your car? black but there's no emotion to that right but if i ask you about the gasoline that that spewed all over your face when you're trying to fill up your boat todd you're gonna you're gonna kind of almost like uh still smell it because yep. it has an emotional impact so i always say that associations are like memories hopped up on emotional steroids so with a dog and i can prove this to people i'll try and make it really short but if I walk into your home, anybody's home, and I take your dog away, I'll drive away. Three, five, ten minutes, whatever amount of time, not much. They, after that, do not have a fucking clue who you are. They don't know who you are, how you met, anything about you. Not a single nope. fucking thing. I'm ever, ever going to think about you ever again. Nope. Not again. Uh, now, if I come back in six months... And I pull down a, a familiar road, the dog might, hmm? So I crack the windows. Familiar smell. I pull into the driveway. That looks really familiar. Door opens, and there you are. Holy fuck, how you been? What's going on? Did you meet Uncle Lynn? He's cool. All of that, it just opens the file. It's the, it's the warehouse that stores the file. Wherever you are, they smell it, and you are there. And boom. Sometimes it can be triggered by a sight. Used to happen all the time. I'd forget to hey, tell. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this on this point. For that, for a dog to be triggered on sight or sound, do you believe it's related to the dog being calmer during the laying down of the memory? Right. So, really nervous, sensitive dogs seem to always be the ones that can't cr bring the memory back through ears or eyes, only nose. But some dogs can. And what do you think makes the difference from the dogs who can and the dogs who can't? bring back the memory through the different senses well it's still an association with the visual and or the hearing right uh, still an association so a certain figure even a certain shape of a vehicle i've seen my dogs react to that was their owners not my dogs my do client dogs mm -hmm. if i'm walking down the street they might react to a vehicle that looks almost exactly the same <gasps> oh. same thing with hearing every time i'd forget to tell my clients that by the way, the thing I'm telling you guys now, 
uh, this is what's going to happen with your dog. And until they can smell you, they're not going to remember you. And if I forget to tell them and the dog doesn't jump with joy when they come in and just ignores them, they freak out. I'm like, shit, I forgot to tell. Them. Take the dog back in there and come in and explain it all. So sometimes the dogs will see and know the figure that's still associated to that emotion or feeling. Same thing with sounds. You, dogs, they, they'll they go after, I'll, I'll walk through the neighborhood, just shake my keys and you'll see dogs just come into the fence lines because they know what it means. Uh, so that it sounds like tags, right? So now to prove, to further prove this, I bring the dog back, you see it, it knows who you are. It's not a memory the same way two plus two is, right? That's, that's conditioned, right? And conditioning is perishable, right? So now here's how I can really prove it. I move into your house and kick you out for, and I keep all your furniture and everything for a little while depending on the individual, the dog is going to mourn your departure, which will look like he's sad because he remembers me. But that's only because everything you own is still in the house. So it's associated to you. And yeah. it, it's but it's all association. It destroys people's, uh, you know, <laughs> idea of their dog when I tell them this and they really see it. Because, you know, I mean, even I got back from my trip in Dallas and Sugar was different when I picked her up at Aubrey's. I brought her home. She's still completely different. I'm trying to figure out why she's so nervous, won't go out in the yard by herself, won't stay out there. And the only thing I can think of is, well, she was different when I arrived there. That's just because of her. But, but I fixed a hole in one of the fences that she used to just climb through and go into the yard all by herself uh, when it was wet. And I've covered that up. That's the only thing that can be different. But she didn't remember me when I arrived. It took a, a day and a half before she was wi willy nilly coming up to me. I've only had her a few months and she's that type of a dog. But it is a fact that they don't have a memory like us. They don't have it. It's an association, which looks like a memory. But when you look at it, really look at it and you accept that, then you can start letting go of some of the things that you blame your dogs for or punish them for that they don't have a fucking clue about. It, yeah, my dog looks like he's done something wrong because every single time I come home and there's something destroyed on the floor, I get angry. And so I come home and they see something destroyed on the floor. He's here. Shit. It doesn't have anything to do with a dog remembering that it tore up the thing. So uh, human intelligence, dog intelligence down here, and it's our responsibility to come down to their level. They can never come up to our level. But I understand the humanize, uh, humanization of our dogs. I mean, I, hey, Todd, speaking of memory, do you remember where you were when you heard the news of 9-11? Yes. Where were you? So Jen and I, you know, we just had our 20 year anniversary. Um, we'd been dating for a little while. Wait a minute, 20, 2000, at, that day was your 20th anniversary? No, 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 I'm saying we just had our 20th oh, okay. anniversary. Like, wow, so, how old are you? <laughs> so I, I forget, it, it felt, feels like we had been dating not a terribly long time. And my roommate at the time, his name was Guillermo, a uh, guy from Peru. It was nine, it was 8.30, 8.45 in the morning, something like that. He comes in, he starts going, do, 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 do. Hey, you guys have to come out. You have to see this. And he comes out and, and he starts pounding on the door for us to come watch it. And since we're in California, everything had already gone down by the time we had got up and we were watching most of what we were watching was recorded footage. But it was like this monumental, you could kind of feel, oh man, this is a big, things are going to change moment. And yeah, um, yeah so start I- Start looking at life different too. Yep. Right, and you start, start looking- is because that that was an event that us and our age group, you know, people before us, you know, might remember Pearl Harbor. Us, we remember 9-11. The reason why I brought that up is because, I mean, we're talking about memories. And I, I listened to this podcast. One of my favorite authors, his name is Malcolm Gladwell. And he has a podcast called Revisionist History. And he has this thing. It's an episode called uh, Free Brian Williams. And if you remember Brian Williams, he was a NBC News reporter. And he got fired because he had claimed that he was on a helicopter in 
Iraq or something like that. And so he basically came up with this whole lie. And there was the, the crew who was part of, I think it was the Marines, were like, you weren't on my flight. You weren't there when we got shot down. Oh, yeah. And he had this whole story how he had created this whole story about him being on his helicopter. And so this episode basically is talking about the human memory about how it's called a, a flashbulb memory on certain things when when we think that we were at certain during like traumatic events that we have these flash memories um, within us. And so he he actually, in, the reason why I asked about 9-11 is because he actually interviewed his neighbor that, and he asked her like, hey, what were you during 9-11? And they basically had two different stories and they remembered it completely, totally different. Yeah. And and so they, and they did a they did a study on on the humans about they did like a, that was a, I can't remember how many people like a hundred people and they had them write down what they remember from the day right and then ten years later they followed up with them and says can you remind uh, go ahead and tell me what you remembered on that day and they shared the story and they didn't match up with what they had written just like hours after nine eleven and they're like well, what happened? They're like, that's that's not what I wrote. They're like, yeah, that's what you wrote. This is your handwriting. He's like, but that's not how I remember it. Basically, they're talking about the, how the human me memory is very tricky, like you were, you know, you were talking about. Uh, but that ep I'll send you the episode, Todd. It's it's uh, revisionist history, uh, save Brian Williams or free Brian Williams, yeah, Williams or something like that. But they have, what's that? I know Malcolm Gladwell, like very uh, very intellectually kind of type of guy. Yeah. Uh, the the memory thing is interesting. Like eyewitness testimony is terrible. People think they know what they see, and we really everything is a perception. Like a lot of our memories are based on you looked at a photo on the mantle for years, and around that photo is a memory, or you were told stories from certain things, and around those stories become memories. But it doesn't mean that they're real to in any situation. But our memories are so sensitive to influence. And and it's interesting when people become com completely convicted in what they saw. I I would I would be shitty in court because I'd be the first one to go. Well, maybe you know, I'd be like, <laughs> I think that could have been what I saw, but who the fuck knows? I don't know. My could have been. my first facility, you know, uh, Todd knows this. Everybody had to do homework every night. I don't care if it was you know midnight when you got home. You still had to do your homework, and you you had to be at six o'clock, and you still had to do it. And sometimes there'd be fights. Uh, Todd was one of the only ones I allowed to, uh, at that time, that could help break up fights. But otherwise, the students were never allowed to interfere or intervene or, or attempt. But every time there was a fight, which was mainly because of the students, uh, they were required to detail in their homework what they saw. And never, not one time ever, was anybody's account the same or even close to sometimes to what really happened. Uh, you know, it, it is great. Trauma does put cracks in your, in your windshield. You can't see all the way. And, but it also, if it's your trauma that it's happening, if you're witnessing, it's one thing, but if it's happening to you, it doesn't matter if it's real or not, or if it really happened the way it happened in your mind or live, how you experienced it is the reality. Yeah. And so that's why one of the foundational components to the pressure matrix is the perceiver. Perceivers involved, not the species, the number or the individual perceiver, because that then becomes your reality if you're the perceiver. And you can't tell somebody that it didn't happen that way, even if you have exact footage showing them what happened compared to what they said, because it is so emotionally attached to them. And uh, sometimes you could really change alter somebody's identity if with with something like that that they didn't see it that way like and like with with stuff with rapes or things like that bad stuff and you you see things on video that you thought were a different way you can't deny that what happened you could really mess somebody up with you that know, and is making uh christmas cookies right now and so Yummy. yeah i know they're actually really good now we I, when i talk about like how a dog's memory works I always compare, you know, how certain smells represent something, right? And so Anne's making Christmas cookies, and that is a good memory for me. But let's say that same smell, someone experienced it. Let's say uh, a kid um, was at home and mom was making cookies, and the husband came home drunk and then beat the crap out of his mom. So now that's the scent of smell 
now represents the traumatic experience that they had, right? And so that's how I compare it with the dogs. That That's how the dogs represents everything. So if they had a traumatic experience. It's all associated to the smell. So, you know, if when people all of it, men have- give off different, uh, have different hormones than women do, right? And so they can pick up on those scents. And so if they were abused by, let's say, a man, they may be scared of a man, not by the sight of a man, but by the scent of a man. Yes, I agree 100% with that. And you're right. You have an example right in front of you about Christmas, any holidays. I can't eat uh, Thanksgiving food. I can't. Christmas, the only time I celebrate is if I got a girlfriend who does, or if I'm with uh, my dear friends that are like a family to me. Uh, But otherwise, it's the most negative experiences every year. Uh, When I was so busy and boarding dogs and letting everybody else go on their Christmas and holiday vacations. Hold on. Lynn. Yes. Hold on a second. So this is how memory actually works. So when you were describing Christmas and Thanksgiving, like when you were talking about it, how did you feel? Right here, right now? Just that one moment when you were talking about Christmas. Did you notice how you started getting real super fidgety and moving around in your chair as you were talking about that all day long? I'm I'm (laughs) fidgety. (laughs) Watch the video because I'm fidgety all the time. But I actually was feeling good. What? No, no, no. What I'm saying is anytime somebody's talking about a memory, positive or negative, you're pulling from the part of the brain and it relives it exactly as it was. The only yeah. thing it doesn't do is your body won't move. Your body won't move the same way that it did, but it relives it the same way. That's why you can we can always tell how people feel about the things they're talking about. Because as they're talking about it, they're kind of going through it. And you always end up expressing it, you know, in pseudo similar ways. In this case, it was more of avoidance and I, not really avoidance, denying it. I wasn't allowing my feelings to come in uh, while I was describing it because I didn't want to have an incident like we had before with Ted. <laughs> so uh, in this case, it would be more, more aggression towards my screen than it would be crying because it was just terrible. Give you an example, just a small example. and. Really, I'm, I'm not feeling any of that. I'm one year, uh, <laughs> one year I was grabbed by the head, dragged into the bedroom, slammed up against the, the drawers, asking where it was, where, what, what is, what, where is it? Where's the money? Cause a kid in my school had stole 300 bucks from his mom and we all had candy for days at that time of life. Who's got. Who's got time to spend three hundred dollars? You didn't have any computers to buy stuff online with, so three hundred dollars in a small town is is significant. But my dad decided to do that and blame me for it. The same thing, the exact same number, Gr- dragged me to my room, threw it, threw me in there, and said, "No Christmas." And so that this is just one of the years. So now, now I'm going to fast forward. This was a month before Christmas, so I. He reinforced this daily and on Christmas, the tree was up and there were presents under the the tree. He thought it would be fun to, I don't know, surprise me uh, and make me think I wasn't going to get Christmas. But that, that was, that was Christmas one, one Christmas. So yeah, I don't really celebrate the holidays. So, uh, but I'm not looking for any, it's just perfect timing with the cookies. I love the idea of family and Christmas and Thanksgiving. I used to go and spend time with my friends and their family. All I love that. I just can't do it for myself. Uh, I I love how Todd used a a Lynn technique on, on, on Lynn. Why are you fidgeting? What's going on? That's what Lynn does me all the time. time. Why, why, Why did you cough? Why did you clear your throat? You're yeah, I do a little that. more of that. Yeah, oh, because shit. if I you answer, say, I didn't say it, but yes, yes, sir, Art, you got that one right. <laughs> yeah, you did get it right. But if, if I'm wrong, I love being so. If I ask you, are you okay? I mean, you, is this something you want to talk about? Why? Because you were cough, you coughed at that time, and you but had hey, to. Bit. Let's let's remove let us from this. Let me finish it real quick. I love being wrong. So when you tell me, no, no, I just okay. I'm just looking and exploring and if it was something we needed to talk about i would love to explore with that individual which happened to be art sometimes but yeah no i i'm not right all the time not even half the time but you 
you know, I'm, I'm exploring. That's the only reason why I do that stuff. But you're right. You caught me fidgeting. Of course. Uh, <laughs> but but, I, but this, the point of this is not that it, it separate all of us. The, the reason, for example, memory has so much power. Why would you not want a client to be talking about a dog attack or like dog fighting when you're trying to get dogs together? It's that same thing I was just pointing out is that as your brain is going through what they're saying, hey, don't get them too close. They're going to fight. The ability to memor like have a memory of a fight means you can actually project this, whatever it is, into the world right there at that moment, right? And then we'll say, oh, you can help start the fight. But that that's what I'm pointing out is that memory has the power to create the present of what that memory held. And people that don't give that power are the ones that can stay stuck in the memory. I don't say stuck in, and you know what I'm saying? It's it's a physical memory through an association versus a memory of two plus two. So uh, throughout this whole conversation. People like to vocalize it too and remind themselves. I, I was talking to somebody today that did that. They were talking about a loss and they went into it a certain way. And I went, hey, hold on. Let's not talk about it that way. Mm -hmm. You could hear them. They were pulling themselves into an emotional low that was avoidable if they didn't talk about it in that particular way. And that's, again, how memory can be manipulated if you have a presence to it. If you're aware well, enough, there's a way to manipulate it. One of the issues is that we've used the word memory when it applies to association or physical memory rather than a memory. And so that's another reason why the average dog owner can't see. Because each one of us throughout this conversation has used the word memory when it wasn't a memory, but it was an emotional impact or association that that includes a memory that looks like a memory but it's not a memory because you smell when i smell tequila i i can't i can't drink tequila limes i don't have limes in my goddamn corona because at 15 i drink a bottle of tequila with a bunch of limes thinking i was clint eastwood i can never ever not smell that but that's not a i'm telling you through a memory but when i smell it it's not a memory and so by using remember the words we uh, choose into being the actions we use. Uh, we're part of the problem by just using a word that is similar to the actual thing. And I'm not saying that any of us are wrong. I'm just pointing that out that we all have said memory when it wasn't a memory. So how can if we if we well, don't let's, use let's the right that, term every single time? Let's make that distinction. Then I don't associate. Um, I don't associate with being wrong. I'm just kidding. Well, you know what I'm saying. I didn't mean it in a. I don't it's identify an important with being wrong. Point of, I, I just use, I'm just trying to say I'm not. That's actually, that's an important point, a clear distinction yeah. of memory versus association. Um, are they interchangeable? I mean, to an extent, they are somewhat interchangeable because an association is still a memory. It's just a different form of a memory. If you bring up memory, associative memory, uh, episodic memory are going to come up. So they're both forms of memory. They're just different types of memory. But when I told it's, you the Christmas story, I was telling you a memory. I wasn't expressing the association. But that, but what I'm saying, that's an episodic memory. That's explicitly human. It is based on your ability to retrieve. It's still a memory. Memory can be, is just different types is what I'm saying. So yes, you're right. We could be more, uh, explicit Especially about what we're saying but they are both they are both types of memories if if we're playing the you know well if you're being exact but if we're trying to help people with dogs to understand the difference we have to share the difference but but you're absolutely correct that is a memory but it's got this emotional you know uh, impact of memory i'm gonna drink I, I have an idea by the way for all the listeners out there, if you take a drink every time the word memory is mentioned, yes. you will be drunk oh. about five minutes into this. Drunk as hell. So. Yes. Just so, remember, so you, what? it's memory. Yes. So why don't we, why don't we do this then? Go ahead, why, don't we, uh, why don't we ask the, uh, the question um, just to kind of like go towards the memory thing and then also give an association on something. But like the first thing that kept coming to my mind, I was like, what, what is a memory that each one of you guys have? of either a crazy moment that has happened in dog training or a memorable one, one that you felt like, holy shit, that felt so good to, to, to have this experience with the dog. Like, let's start with memory first. No, let's not do the association part right now. Memory of best time that you've had working with a dog. And let's start with so, Art. Wait a minute. I, 
to make sure I understand. Yeah. You want to use the same memory with an association or just a memory and then an association? Yeah, a memory. We'll start with the memory first and then we'll go into association and get dive. It is the association. I just uh, want to no, be clear. Associate with an association with the smell of what a memory associates with. Exactly. Okay, I just no, I like that, but yeah. but no, it was it's not. So it's going to be the memory first. Let's just start with the memory, a really good memory or something crazy that happened that was very memorable that you will always be able to like go back to and be like that was something. And then let's go after that. I'll ask uh, the follow up question will be what's an association that you have based on whatever you guys say next. So let's start with art for this one. Right. Yeah, I want to see if you All got right, that. So this is a funny story, and I, I share this on my social media. It's actually happened this year. Um, I get called to uh, to do a consultation at a house. Knock on the door. The dogs start barking. You know, pretty pretty common thing. No big deal. But then, I think there's three dogs. There's two French bulldogs and an English bulldog. And I could I can identify the French bulldogs and I can identify the English bulldogs bark. But then I hear another bark. I can't figure out if they have three dogs. Why do we hear another bark? So the lady opens the door, she squeezes the door, she's like, hang on, let me get the dogs back. Closes the door. I hear a fourth bark. I'm thinking, what is going on? So then she goes, okay, you can come in now. And the dogs are still barking, okay? And now she had put them behind a baby gate. She turns around and starts barking at the dogs. Literally uh, barking at the dogs. Oh, no. And I'm standing there. Company. I'm that thinking, am I being punked right now? Is this a joke? Like, what's going on? And I'm just standing there. And she's like, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to get them to be quiet. I'm like, oh, obviously it's not working. And so I was like, where did you, why, why did you, why are you barking at your dog? She's like, well, that's what the last dog trainer told me to do. And so I was like, well, that's interesting. <laughs> I said, because you know, your dogs are barking, you're just joining along in the bark. Yeah. It's also the same thing when people yell, they're just joining along in the bark. Uh, and so, um, I don't know. I ended up working with that lady, but we just weren't a good fit. Like just wasn't going to work out, but. What I do remember, and I don't know why I remember this, I remember that she had a bunch of horses, like books on horses. She was a, a horse, um, like a horsemanship person, which I love. I love those, I love working with those people. Um, but I just remember the associated memory that I have was the books that she had were all about horses, horsemanship, you know, bareback, all these like cool things, you know? Uh, but a lot of things that she should have been doing with her dog what she does with horses she didn't she doesn't do with her dogs she just treated them like like i mean i don't know what she treated them like it was like she treated them, it was weird it's the weirdest experience I've, one of the weirdest experiences i've had when i walked into a home that's what i got barking at them yeah that would be weird have you got all right guilty thing have you guys ever growled at a dog yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i even Definitely got on my messing around pause no not messing around for fucking legit like i'm gonna take you out yeah, the real. Yeah, no, I've never done it before, like, but I've, oh, I've, messed, I've messed around doing it before. Yeah. Yeah. I've done play battles and like played with the dogs. Know, I started doing on some little dogs that worked really fucking good. I remember I had somebody they walk they they brought this Pomeranian over. And this thing was a little fucker, and it wouldn't stop for like forty five minutes while they were there. I'm like, why don't you guys just go ahead and step out? And when they did, I took my forearm. I went. Bruh. And that fucking thing in two seconds went done. <laughs> wow. I'm out. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not in for this. And it went immediately went like this. And you want to know one of the coolest things I ever saw with Yoa? We were in um, the desert. We were on our way to Vegas. And we were trying to pick dogs for the uh, event. Right? And we're at this rescue in the desert. And we go to this there's a line of kennels and yo i see Lo yoa he's over there he's leaning down and this dog comes up to the kennel and starts going no 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 and yo goes he fucking gleeks yeah and he gleeks and this dog goes gleek like like, spit? Spit. like that yeah, like, but like dream and he goes oh, yeah dogs dogs hate it he goes animals hate it when shit spits in their mouth and <laughs> he got this dog like it either Yoda's go in the back of the kennel and surrender and I was like, that's the coolest oh thing I've ever God. seen. And I was working in a facility with this little, uh, it was a, um, a uh, fuck, what are they? The real wrinkly, Sharpays. Mm -hmm. This really bit Sharpay. 
And it came up to the Kindle and did the same thing. And I can't gleek, but I took water and I went, it worked. It went so good. I couldn't believe it. So there's a, there's a, what's that? Akalugia. Uh, yeah. it, has to, it has to be with the timing. You have to get yeah. it inside their mouth, in the back of their mouth. <laughs> for it to wow. Work. I, I got other that... things to practice than bidding into a specific <laughs> target. Was that your memory? <laughs> That's wild. Uh, that was one. That was a memory. All right. Well, that, that was a good one. I yeah. say, you know what? One of my strongest memories was my first appointment. It was when the, the first legit where I went down and sat with somebody and did an appointment and they didn't really want an appointment. They were just like, oh, I heard you went through this program to a friend of mine. Oh, sure. Come in. Let's see what we've got. And they had a, a Jack Russell and this do this whole thing, spend about an hour and a half with her. And then at the very end, she goes, oh, and by the way, this he gets really aggressive or possessive with bones. And so I'm like, okay, we'll go ahead and give him a bone. And he goes a bone and I go to take it and he gets really wired and gets really fired up. And so I start probably, I, and the, the funny thing is one of the last things I'm sure I'd seen you do with a client, Lynn, was try to block a dog with, the, with your foot. Yeah. And so I try to block this dog with my foot and I, I keep going and I keep going and I keep going and I keep going. And I can't do it. I can't make anything happen. And I quit. And then come to find out that this dog gets real aggressive to feet. You know, <laughs> right? And so, and so it, like literally the first appointment taught me two things. Unless you're really looking for help, I'm not going to help you. Because that was like, don't just entertain yourself with this. If, unless you really want help. And then the other one was... You have to know what to do and follow through 100%. to prevent something like that. So in the very first appointment, I was really kind of into what, what can happen if you, don't, if you don't do it correctly. And as a result, I have never forgot that lesson. And I don't know if I, you know, it will stay with me forever. One, two, follow through. Or no yeah. one will believe you. Yeah. So, All right. So that so then what what so was your memory first? Yeah. Well, I'll tell a memory. It could I'll leave out any kind of association, but it's a really good memory and it's important. And then when we go to associations, it's pretty crazy. But the, yeah. So one of the first dogs, uh, you know, I I learned from Caesar and all of that. But it, my real education began when he couldn't do any more consultations or rehabilitations unless it was for the show. And uh, so one of my first ones uh, from his year long list uh, of people was, I think his name was Bubba. Yeah, Bubba, white, like big white American, jeez. Uh, uh, bulldog? Not a pit bull, not a pit bull, but uh, the American bulldog, the big one, right? And uh, so, this is for everybody. <laughs> you know, I walk in there and she's got the dog on the end of the leash and it's trying to kill me, right? It's, it wants to get to me. And so what did I do? Just like what Caesar does. Let the dog go, right? <laughs> this, is, this goes along with it, what you did, uh, Todd. You know, you, you were taking little bits and pieces of things and trying to make it all one without another follow thing to cut, follow it up with. So. You know, when he would do that, let the dog go. He understood everything that that dog had in mind and who it was to its core. And when I first started working with the aggressive, the real aggressive dogs, I didn't have that depth of understanding. So I said, let the dog go. And she said, no way. And I said, let the dog go. I mean, it was like frothing at the mouth trying to get to me. Right. Red I said, let Rover, the dog go. Red Rover, send Bubba yeah. over. <laughs> yeah, I said, let the dog go. No way, man. So I do have follow throughs, even though I didn't have dog psychology follow through at the time. So I did what I, I always did when there was a dog I needed to uh, dog fights at the park or just instinctually, I just ran and jumped onto it and I, I held it down. I don't know how it didn't get me, but I did. And while I'm, and it's a big dog. And while I'm manually trying to just kind of contain it into one spot, not trying to do the 
alpha role and nothing like that. I was just trying to, hey, you, you need to calm down. I hear in the background, man, you have balls. And so I looked up at her and she was like, I think, I, I want to say Mediterranean. She had like really beautiful olive skin. She was as pasty white. If the light went on my wall, wall, she was pasty white. And I looked at her and then I looked at the dog and said, wow, I, I think I, I think I did something I shouldn't have done, right? I didn't even really know what was going on with the dog. Turned out this dog had a hold of her brother's stomach for over 20 minutes. That's what the call was about, right? So here I am, let the dog go. Man, you have ball. When I looked up at her, I, I was like, holy shit, what do I do now? I mean, I just did what I always do, but that was a wake up call that you gotta understand what you're doing, not just because you saw somebody do something once, if you don't have the follow through, oh man, I mean, that was crazy. That was crazy. That's, That's a, insane. An interesting memory. I, you know what? I love the line. I do what I always do. Yes. <laughs> That's the one. That's the one. <laughs> what I always does that do. even mean? I did what I always do. I take over, you know, it's, it's what I do. <laughs> so. That's why there's go. levels. That's why there's levels to this. <laughs> there really yeah. are, man. And you gotta be careful. Uh, you know, when but. one of the first appointments, like again, at the beginning, I was so cavalier. Same thing. It was actually it's funny. It's American Bulldog and a dachshund, and super aggressive dachshund. I'm like, let it go, man. And the <laughs> thing comes over and it grabs a hold of the heel of the of the American Bulldog, and I have to grab this thing and pick it up off the ground to keep it. You know, and the, the dachshund's dangling from it, but your story's different. You're like, I, I had to do what I, you know, I did what I, I do. Right. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you've seen me do stuff that probably like, you know, who would ever think to do that? But the, yeah, you know, I, I don't know how I didn't get bit on that one. Uh, Cause she had the end of the leash and wasn't going to let it go. So she was six feet away from the dog and I just jumped on the dog and and I, I mean, you just I, I walked in, you walked in, walked over and jumped on the dog. Am I getting, <laughs> am I getting you right? Oh, well, I, I, have you ever done this? Well, I, what I did was I hyped up the dog in, unintentionally by telling her to let it go and, and having an argument with whether she's going to let the dog go or not. And then I just finally went and just did what I did. <laughs> I have told people to let the dogs go. Oh, but, yeah. Of course, but but like like Lynn said, when you know now we know when we can say let the dog go. We yeah. can look at it and go, oh yeah, let the fucker go. But I you know not, not to say that too, right? I did not know, but I saw Caesar do it, and by God, I was going to do it. I could have gotten really, really hurt because, like I said, you know, had a hold of her brother's stomach for twenty minutes, couldn't get him off. Uh, so that could have been my my neck. You just got to be really That's careful. Crazy. Yeah, so I have the association, right? <laughs> so I have, I have a, a to go to with the memory thing with a quick, super quick memory that I have was being in uh, New York filming with um, Steve, and we we're filming a video. We we're probably filming with some clients, and then I hear like this commotion behind us, and there was dogs getting in a dog fight in a, in a dog park. It was crazy because we were just like we have to go do something. So we, I, I still had my camera. He runs over, hops over the fence, and. Um, People were like, like doing everything. You know, you guys have always seen people try to break up dog fights. Like one guy's hand was all bloody from trying to open the dog's mouth and the whole nine. And Steve just put on a leash and just applied pressure and the dog would eventually was just like, what? And just like spit the dog out. But that was crazy. Cause it was just like, we're doing something. And it's like back here, there's a whole other party happening. And, uh, but you to, that, to that, to the, yeah. To that point, have you guys like, is that like kind of your go-to, like um, maybe cut off some air, the air supply to the dog to like release? Well, let's the dog do that another day. Let's talk about yeah. that one a whole another day. It's an yeah. entire thing. All right. Uh, Cause I, I have lots to say about that and that would be a good episode, but yes. How about a memory of air supply though? So when I was a kid <laughs> and we would drive up to North Carolina my parents played air supply in the car. Oh my God. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I know all of the songs of air supply. See how that works? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so to that yep, point. I so remember to that point my vacations, then. everyone else, we, we would play. So now yeah. associations? Yeah, so let, let's go with, um, let's start with uh, art on, on associations. What What is something that, um, if you see it, smell it, I know you already said the cookie thing for, for Christmas, but like if you see it or you smell it or 
you feel this feeling like what is an association that you have towards that mm. thing so i remember actually it was 12 years today actually on november 28th and the reason why i know that is because it was a day before my forgot birthday my 35th birthday i think it was um i had just gone out to have some pizza with my at the time my wife uh and we came home we were having some problems we having some issues and we'd just gone to therapy and then we went and got some some pizza uh and then we came home and you know we weren't really talking and then she's like she put her rings on the counter she's like i i can't do this anymore and that was the end of my my marriage but i remember the the, the pizza for a long time and i love pizza but pizza the smell like the um uh, the sauce would always trigger a a memory of that, you know. Uh, and I can eat pizza now; I'm totally over it now. Um, but that's that's an associated memory for me through smell to the smell of pizza. Crazy, interesting. Yeah, we love pizza. I have two, mine. Yeah, but they're not so. My, mine aren't as like sad as ours. Uh, I have one with <laughs> sunscreen and cigarette smoke, or excuse me, cigar smoke. Like some reason sunscreen, I mean, I go all the way back to like, like beach times, kid, you know, there's certain things with su smells of sunscreen. I go way back. And then, um, the coconut one, the coconut smelling one. Yeah. I don't even know if it matters, man. There's just something yeah. about the overall smell of whatever sunscreen is based in. And then cigar smell. I'm when my, uh, when I was young, I would go out on my granddad smoked cigars and we'd be on a swing. He'd sit on a swing and smoke a cigar and for whatever reason for you know, until forever after the cigar will always take me to that swing. So wow. uh, those are two good ones. They're not as sad as Art's pizza story though. Sorry, yeah. Art. I love pizza. <laughs> me too, man. So what's what's I yours, Lynn? Pizza. Uh well, you know, we could I tell you a lot of associations all I mean that whole thing with Ted and a song. I guess it didn't right. cover that much in that. So Created uh, Hump Day Hero, which is always, I, I haven't been focused on it lately, but every Wednesday, Hump Day and Hero, my favorite song uh, for many reasons, is Hero by Foo Fighters. And uh, like I'm getting chills right now, right, up my head. So whenever I would hear that song, I just loved it. But then, of course, Ted, I was taking Ted to, uh, to die that day. And so I couldn't hardly listen to that song and enjoy it. I'd always turn it off every time. And so what I did was I decided I still love that song. And it, that song's so old and they play it all, two or three times a day on any radio station that I listen to. It's, it's such a great song. And I, I, I wanted to hear it properly. So I created a new association through a hero and I attached heroic actions either by a dog or a human to save a dog or a dog saving another dog or a human or whatever it didn't matter as long as it was heroic to me it became the hump day hero video and i've made some really great ones i think and i can listen to that song now and and not think about ted so it's kind of an opposite thing that you're asking but i did create an association association is very powerful feeling wise yep. and i created a new one and i can listen to that song anytime now now, other associations, I think I told you about the uh, tequila and limes. Mm -hmm. I can now have uh, limes in gin and tonics. I can have it in food. Can't have it in beer. I don't even drink tequila. I can't even get around tequila. But another thing, whenever I smell freshly mowed grass, like if it's been fresh, you know that smell of it. And sometimes the, uh, exhaust, the exhaust, the exhaust, I found my, my thing does these, these, yeah. uh, I, I don't know why my I don't know why it's doing that, but mine I, does too. I can't hardly move my hands. It's in check. Look at that. See, Look it doesn't that. work for anybody. Oh, oh, you got it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> see, with two of them. Yep. No, nothing happened. Anyway, so freshly mowed uh, grass, and especially like the uh, oil and and uh, gas smell that comes from a lawnmower takes me right back because when I was you know young, I. I through 16 and everything, I would mow lawns for a like a real estate company that was trying to keep the lawns fresh for the house. And so I did that, mowing lawns, raking leaves, shoveling snow, washing the, the pavement, anything that's 
you can see the progress you're making. It's almost like a pattern. It keeps me focused. And so I, whenever I smell it, I, I, I can only, I can hear Motley Crue shout, shout, shout at the devil. You know, because out in the eighties, he had those really orange, big fluffy things that it, it just noise coming out. And they weren't even good speakers, but that's what every time. And I, every time, same thing with the smell of tequila and, and limes, especially bad stuff. It sticks with you. I think we need a whole other episode on how to reassociate. I mean, that's essentially what, what we do for a living is we reassociate yeah. the brain. And, and I don't want to have it now because skill and it's forever. We should, but, we should have a, a conversation because it's a skill and it's specific and, and sometimes time consuming. You have because, to understand yeah. it, then you have to see it, then you have to understand the process of guessing and trying it. and seeing if it's sticking and working. You know, the reassociation process is everything. The fact you just said you reassociated the song from sad back to happy is a legitimate skill set. And and it can be anything. Sometimes it happens on purpose. Sometimes it happens on accident. Sometimes it goes from good to bad. How do you take it from bad back to good? You know what I mean? Unless it's like, you're, yeah. Unless you're having the exact impact or can be specific with your timing and uh, intensity, it has to be developed. Uh, because you can't recreate a, you know, those powerful moments overnight. Like the first six months I did that, I cried like a, you know, tears coming out of my thing every time I was making that video. But now I, I still watch them 5,000 times before I post them because I'm creating a new association that I love. And it's, it's power. It's, different than conditioning we should make sure and just do this another time because it's a great topic yeah it's different than conditioning yeah i i, I yeah, think the sure. the associate like creating new associations dude that could be a whole thing because that is really what we focus on um when doing the tra dog That's training all well, i do so dude we're, we're we're getting ready to wrap this up art, like you're deep in thought. Like, what are you thinking about right now art yeah yeah tell no, i'm thinking about how uh, lynn talks about his behavior expectation drill and so the behavior expectation drill is just doing it over and over or um, creating what you want, right? And so if the dog oh, has there's a bad memory or something, it's, it's, that the expectation is first what the dog can expect from you, not what you expect from the dog. That's right, how you correct. do it. But that's, that's when you're talking about memory and like how we work them through, that's the only thing that keeps going in my mind is the behavior expectation drill. That's all. That was nice. in my head. That's all. I thought you were worried about your microphone not working earlier oh, i am I'm, i hear an echo and it's driving me crazy slight <laughs> slight echo hopefully hopefully it won't be too bad your associations with your kids you guys have kids and wives and and stuff like that powerful associations baby smells all of that you know uh I, i'm sure I mean, you guys have a... you want to sit next to you with a crying baby on a plane because my association with crying was like who gives a shit yeah. So I can have a baby sit next to me on a plane and cry for hours and I not give a fuck because I never got wired to stress in me. So there's no association with stress. It just got wired to like, so what? I can hear it. Big deal. And I love know, those, those things go a long way. As a waiter, everybody hated having the kids. And I said, I'll take them. I'll take them. Because you make the kids laugh. You make the kids happy. You keep them from tearing stuff up. Those parents will tip the shit out of you, man. And I don't care if they're making a mess. The bus boy's going to clean it up. And I'm not doing that because I don't care about the bus boys. I tip my bus boys like shit. So I never put my fingers on a dirty plate. I would have bus boys. They'd see me carrying a plate and they'd run over and take it from me. They're and then not being and inclusive it. to bus boys, Lynn. Well, they would <laughs> yell at each other about, you can't let him carry because then he's going to, you're going to affect our money. I tipped like crazy. I, I loved having the kids. And anyway. But yeah, I don't know if I could uh, handle the crying uh, too much. I could do it for a while because I'd want to help the child. But there comes a point where I don't have that that like mothers have. You know, they don't. They can just pick a baby up and it's done. Um, if you want to hear this, you just brought it up. Since we're on association, <laughs> I might as well give it to you. You guys know that that husky that I worked with for a long time during yeah. COVID, right? She was paralyzed and then ultimately she had that like phantom leg syndrome. It was just tearing her leg apart. Uh, so she would bite anybody and everything. She had, she was feral. So the point she had to wear a diaper and uh, 
the, uh, you know, the people would put a towel over its head and then could change the diaper. And, and this person could change the diaper without a towel. On it. But I said, I wanted to uh, go further with the dog. So I, when she went out of town, I said, the dog can stay with me for like a week. Man, let me tell you something. I've got video and something unlocked in me that I didn't know was there. And I, my hands were, I, I, I couldn't breathe. I could I, I couldn't change the diaper. Something about the vulnerability of, I, I don't know, but I could, she just ended up walking around my house, peeing and pooping. I didn't care. I, I could not, something in me would, I couldn't put my hands together to put the, to change the diaper. I, so there must be something from way back that I don't even remember that's in me. And that was crazy. I meant to, to really work on that with that dog just for myself as well. But ultimately she had to go, but I have something in there that I hope it doesn't rear its ugly head again. You, you know what? You need to just work with an incontinent, go get an incontinent dog. And just yeah, fucking that's what I want. And not, so you don't <laughs> get fucking bit, you know what I mean? But just get an incontinent dog. So you're changing diapers all day long. I wasn't even worried about, you know me, I don't care about getting bit. I don't care about that at all. It had nothing to do with her biting me. It had everything to do with the idea that I have this fragile being that requires me to be such an adult that I'm going to clean and put a diaper. I don't know what it was, but it had nothing to do with the biting. Obviously, well, I, know, I, I know I know that, but I'm just saying for the practice of it. Yes. Oh, you're, you're right. I could. I don't have to. I don't have to delay and not have another dog to to work on. You're absolutely correct. See how I avoided, I guess, unconsciously by saying, "Oh, well, she passed. I can't do it anymore." That's that's, that's okay, our brain. Man. We'll get there. Hey, I'm I'm. Uh, now it's a good idea. Now I'm going to have to think about that now. I don't know <laughs> if I'm ready to, to dive into that part. I mean, I shut down. I was, I was frozen. I don't know if I, hmm, I don't know if I. That's interesting. I you know, I, that's interesting shit though. A psychiatrist would dive into that really deep. I mean, it's one. obviously some associative connection to something deep uh, connected to the whole like, oh shit, the freezing of something for sure. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Right, speaking of crying, being yeah, yeah, you're gonna pour baby. Gonna take care of. Stop the vulnerable Lynn. Let's stop. Yeah, yeah, just, stop. I would, I would uh, do it right now. I'm just not in a place where I can allow myself to. I'm not in a place right now that I can see what happens. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Hi guys. Well, like I said, speaking of crying babies, I gotta go take care of mine. I hear my baby crying over there, so I gotta go help my wife out. So. Anyways, this is another great episode of the Dog Psychology Podcast. Make sure you like and subscribe, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts. Leave us some comments. Trust us. We do read them, and we do uh, get a kick out of when they call me the sweetness and these two crusty cookies. Dude, one person so, called you that. It's not like the, the whole only thing that's been said about you. you know, that, 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 they always talk about Lynn. It's always about Lynn. Lynn, oh, I blew my mind, and this and that. I'm like, because Lynn talks all the time, but uh, yeah, he never shuts <laughs> no, his pot. I, I just need one sweet, one sweet comment. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, no. guys. Later, guys. See you. <laughs> See you.